In this video, we are going to discuss a very common interview problem, which you can see in the screen already that you have to remove duplicates from a given array. So here is the example that if you are given an array, which is 1, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, you have to remove the duplicates so that only 1, 2, 3, 4, the unique items remain in the array. Now, the problem itself is very easy and a lot of candidates might just want to jump into the coding straight. But before doing that, I would like to request you to consider a few things. For example, one of the very important step in the coding interview is requirement collection or clarification. So you have to ask the right questions. And sometimes it's even OK to ask the wrong questions. But you need to make sure that you ask enough questions so that the requirement is very clear. So the, the interviewer didn't tell us whether this is a sorted array or not. but we can see that this array is sorted. So should we make an assumption that this array is sorted? No, I think the best question or best approach is to just ask the question to the interviewer that is the array sorted? So let's figure out what question we can ask first. So is the array sorted? So the answer could be yes or no, but say for in our problem, it's, it's yes, then should we return the same array? Then, yes, we can return the same array. In that case, we have to do it in place. For example, if A is given and which has 1, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, then the first four items should be 1, 2, 3, 4. And should the output be sorted? the output be sorted and we also have yes to the uh, yes as the answer so let's figure out a straightforward way of doing it and i am going to use python and before doing that if you are using google doc for your coding interview what you can do is to reduce the font size a bit and instead of normal text let's see what we have option here maybe you can use courier new yeah, so we can write a function or method uh, remove duplicates and it receives an sorry it receives an a list because in Python there is nothing called array and now one thing which is very important is the way you name your function so you could have just written like div, def fnc or def a and then you will definitely lose points in your interview because your code must be readable. The function names must make sense. And of course, the variable names as well. And if you are expert in Python, then you already know that what we can do is if A is in list, then I can create a set and then convert it to a list again. So it should be like A list set A. So what we're doing here is converting A into a set, which will remove the duplicates because a set cannot have duplicate items in it. And then again, we can convert it back to a list like this, and then we can just return it. But here the problem is the output should also be sorted, right? So is the array sorted? The input array is sorted, and we have to return the same array, and the output has to be sorted. Everything is okay, but here the output is not sorted. So we can just return a dot sort. But there is another problem. So are we using additional memory here? I think yes, because we are converting because this a and this a, they are not the same. Because here we are creating a new set and then converting it into a list and then keeping the list or assigning the list in a. So here the problems are we are using additional memory and the next problem is the time complexity so it's fine i mean as a first step or first attempt this code looks very good then what is the time complexity of the function so converting a list to a set it might take o n time then converting it to a list might take o n time but here the more important part is a dot sort 
and we know that uh, sorting is n log n so time complexity of a stress of the standard sorting algorithms even the built-in sort method or sorted method in python it takes n log n time so our time complexity of n log n so as a first as i said as a first attempt this is well and good but now we have to see that we need to here the memory is on we need to reduce the usage of additional memory our target is to make it o1 and here the target is to make it o n so let's see how can we uh, iterate our function that we created here and we can also change the font here okay so let's attempt again give it another try remove duplicates let's see that we want to reduce the time complexity first and we it's okay to use the additional memory so i can have a new list b and initially it's empty and as our list a is sorted we can just iterate over it for uh, i in range 1 to n so what we shall do is if array i is not equal to array i minus 1 which means that our current item which is array i is not equal to the previous item and we already know that the items are sorted it means this is a new item we are seeing in our list so we can just write b dot append i else we just continue because if it's same then we shall just continue and then what we can do here is return b or another thing is you can also return the length number of unique items which is just the length of b so well and good here we just use additional memory and just we are iterating over every item of the input array and thus the time complexity is now order of n so it's no longer n log n so which is a huge win and after you wrote, uh, after you wrote this code what you should do in the interview is discuss that whether you should test this and i think you should and then you need to explain okay how your code works so let's start with our given example say if it's one 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 two three four four then what happens is initially i starts from one right so this is the one uh, index one so this is not equal to the previous item which is fine sorry this is equal to the previous item that is fine so we are iterating over the array so again this one is also equals to the previous previous item which is one so we are going to the next item and when i see two two is not equal to one so we are adding two in our b, uh, b list and then when i see three three is not equal to two so i am adding three then i see four four is not equal to three so which is a previous item so we are adding, appending four and then we see the final item four which is equal to the previous item so we are skipping it and this is our answer and of course this is a wrong answer right because i don't see the number one here so the reason is we are starting it from the uh, starting the loop from index one not index zero so if your first few items are duplicate those will not be in your b list so what you can do here you can initialize the b list with the first item so the first item will always be in the b list and this is how it should work and it's okay to make the mistake but as long as you test it or talk to your interviewer talk through your code that okay for given input this how the code will work and what output it will produce uh, you will eventually find the mistake in your code and fix it and that's great now i have another problem in my code so can you see it what if the given array a doesn't have any item at all then while i am trying to access array index 0 it will give me an error right because uh, there is nothing in the index 0 so what we can do here is we can have a check if len a is 0 
then we just return empty list and zero. So it means that there is nothing in our given list. So we can just return an empty list and we can return zero as the number of items. So I think now we are good, but we are still one more step away to our final solution. We need to reduce our additional memory. So how can we do that? Now let's see what what if we don't have this? So we need we need to get rid of the B list. Okay. So once I find a new item, for example, let me work on it again. So I'm making a copy here. So in during the coding interview, it's okay to take your time to think through and instead of thinking in paper and pencil because nowadays we are mostly giving the interviews over zoom or any other uh, online platform so you can just think here th uh, but make sure that you think loud which means that you are communicating your ideas or your thought process with your interviewer which will prove your communication skill and it also gives uh, the interviewer a clear idea about your thought process and also if the interviewer sees that you are going in a wrong direction. He or she can intervene early and correct your path. So let's see what we can do if we don't want to use the B array. Say we start from the first item and we can just keep it because this is all right. If there is already one item here, we can have it here. So, so we can start with the second item just like we did in this for loop right so we started the range from one not zero and so when we start from the second item we can see that okay whether it's equal to the previous item it is it means that this is a duplicate right so we want to create to keep an index here so let's make it j j is one so it means that we need to put a new item in index j or we need to put a new item in aj and j is one and aj is also one so but as this is a duplicate we already see that this is this is equal to the previous item so we are going ahead and now and in order to go ahead we can keep another variable i so when i is two which is zero one two here it's also equal to the previous item so we can increase i is three so this is two and this is not no longer this is equal to the previous item. So here we can write the array j is a i which means we are overwriting it like this and then increase the value of j and now we go to the next item which is i equal to four then it means this one and of course this is not equal to the previous item so we can just write it here and then increase the value of j and we'll go to the next item which is 4 4 is not equal to 3 the previous item so we can just put it here and increase the value of j and then we go to the next item which is 6 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 and this time this is equal to the previous item so we are not doing anything and we are done with the list and now we see that the first four items are the unique items and with the value of j we already know that how many items are unique in this array or in this list so let's write the code for it so initially j should be one And of course, we need to keep this if condition. And here we don't need this B anymore. If a i is not equal to the previous item, it means a j is a i. So we are putting a i into a j and now we need to increase the value of j, j plus equal to one. And now we need to return a and j, j is the length of a. Here we are not using any additional memory. We can see that in this case, we have some 
additional item in the array or in the list but this is not a problem because we are returning j so we can if if we are supposed to return something we can just return only the part that is unique we could do like this or you can just do like that and now the interview is not over what you need to do again is to explain your thought process or better you need to test it so there are two ways if you are using google doc or any other whiteboarding thing where there is no really an id or anything you can just create some test cases and work over your interviewer through these cases or if you are already using an id then you can actually write some test code like you can write another method test remove duplicates and here you can create some array like one 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 and then here the what you receive is d and l like remove i mean something like that you can just uh, write your code to test it or like i did before you can just work through the code and see okay for this input what is the expected output and don't just do only the example you can come up with more test cases especially in some problems there are corner cases which you need to find otherwise uh, the interview is not complete or incomplete and last but not not the least you need to mention about your time complexity and space complexity because this is we see that we are iterating over every item of the given array so our time complexity is now on and we are not using any additional memory so our memory complexity is our space complexity is order of 1 so i think uh, here we are done i mean we could satisfy the requirement and now if you have more time the interviewer might take you to the next problem or uh, often time this problem is enough right because here we started with a simple uh, problem and iterated over it so it depends on where you are actually giving the interview in some companies uh, this is good enough for the, the uh, one hour or 45 minutes interview but in some other places especially for 60 minute interviews the interviewer usually asks you two questions and the first question is relatively simple and the second question is usually more complex in that case if the this question is treated as the simple one then you have to uh, prepare for the next question and the good thing is during those type of interviews at the beginning the interviewer usually tells you whether he is going he or she is going to ask you one question or two questions and if it's two questions that make sure that you don't spend too much time discussing the first question so you have to quickly get through it and get into the second problem which is more challenging and kind of the decisive factor for your interview so good luck and i hope to see you again in another discussion